Oh. Uh, tell, tell me who I am. Well, I ain't sure. If you don't know who you are, uh, you're the guy that called me uh, uh, at breakfast on Saturday morning and want to know the number for B.C. Bonding. That's who you are. 563-0065. Yep. And free plug. <laughs> right. And, uh, yeah, I was checking on uh, uh, Barney, somebody out. And, yeah, uh, them relatives has got a way of getting in jail. <laughs> relatives. Uh, uh, she's got plenty of relatives up here, but they're not my, not in the kin to me. But uh, I'm still working on it. I probably will. She, she's the... Uh, uh, innocent or the lesser guilty of the party of two and the other one's already got it's okay one, it's the okay the other one has already got out so, uh, and uh, I think they're trying to uh, take this young lady's child and let her goats get out did they <laughs> well maybe what, they, what I can do maybe she can take a few tips from my goat about yeah. how to get out yeah, it could well be. Yeah, right. Let me read you something from the yeah. Congressional Record. All right. This is on increasing the statutory limit on the public debt. Okay. And here's what it says. This is from the Congressional Record of uh, a few years past. It says, Increasing America's debt weakens us domestically and internationally. Leadership means that the Buck, stop here. Instead, Washington is shifting the burden of bad choices on today onto the backs of our children and grandchildren. America has a debt problem and a failure of leadership. America deserves better. I therefore intend to oppose the effort to increase America's debt limit. That's signed by Barack Obama when he was a senator. Aye. Now, he also says today that uh, the American people do not get to demand a ransom for doing their job. You don't get a chance to call your bank and say, I'm not going to pay my mortgage this month unless you throw in a new car and an Xbox. If you're in negotiations around buying somebody's house, you don't get to say, well, let's talk about the price I'm going to pay, and if you don't give me the price, I'm going to burn down your house. That's not how negotiations work. That's not how it, hap how it happens in business. It's not how it happens in private life. The same way members of Congress and the House of Representatives in particular don't get to demand ransom in exchange for doing their job. Now, what, what did, what's wrong with them? Do, them? do I smell a conflict there? Well, I, I smell uh, uh, these people fork it down. I've noticed that too. Uh, you know, you can't uh, declare that American has a debt problem back when he was running for office and our national debt was somewhere in the neighborhood of five trillion to six trillion dollars. Now. Since he's come in office, it's okay to put America deeper and deeper in debt because he has added more debt onto the national debt than all the rest of the presidents since the beginning of this country has occurred. Well, I have another little thing here um, that I would like to read you. This is from the... Um, NewburyportNews.com. I don't know who that is, but uh, Newburyport. Okay, Pat Belanicourt went on a trip last week that was intended to showcase some of America's greatest treasures. Instead, the Salisbury resident said she and others on her tour bus witnessed an ugly spectacle that made her embarrassed, angry, and heartbroken for her country. She was one of thousands of people who found themselves in a national park as the federal government shut down went into effect on October 1st. For many hours, her tour group, which included senior citizens, visitors from Japan, Australia, Canada, and the United States, were locked in a Yellowstone Park National Park Hotel under armed guard. The tourists were treated harshly by armed park employees. She said so much that some of the foreign tourists 
with limited English skills thought they were under arrest. When finally allowed to leave, the bus was not allowed to hold at all along 2.5 hour trip out of the park, not even to stop at a private bathroom that was open along the route. We've become a country of fear and guns and control, said Valancourt, who grew up in Lawrence. This must be in Kansas, I don't know. It was like they brought out the armed forces. Nobody was saying we're sorry. It's all, it was all like, and she clenched her fist and banged it against her forearm. Valancourt took part in a nine-day tour of western parks and sites along with about four dozen senior citizen tourists. One of the highlights of the tour was was to be Yellowstone, which they arrived just as the shutdown went into effect where they arrived. Rangers systematically sent visitors out of the park, though some groups that had hotel reservations, such as Valancourt, such as Valancourt's, were allowed to stay for two days. Those two days started out on a sour note, she said. The bus stopped along the road when a large herd of bison, them buffaloes, ain't they? Bison. Yeah, big bison, them bison, them buffalo. Passed nearby, and seniors filed out to take photos. Almost immediately, an armed park ranger came by and ordered them to get back in, saying they couldn't recreate. The tour guide, who had paid a $300 fee the day before to bring the group into the park, argued that the seniors weren't recreating, just taking photos. The ranger responded and said, Sir, you are recreating. And her tone became very aggressive, Valancourt said. The seniors quickly filed back on board, and the bus went to the Old Faithful Inn, the park's premier lodge located adjacent to the park's most famous site. Old Faithful Geyser, the, that was as close as they could get to the famous site, however. Barricades were erected along Old Faithful, and the seniors were locked inside the hotel with armed rangers stationed at the door. They look like Hulk Hogan's arm. They told us you can't go outside, she said. Some of the Asians who were on the tour said, Oh my God, are we under arrest? They felt like they were criminals. By October 3rd, the park, which sees an average of 4,500 visitors a day, was nearly empty. The remaining hotel visitors were required to leave. As the bus made its 2.5-hour tour out of Yellowstone, the tour group made arrangements to stop at a full-service bathroom at an in-park dude range that had done business they had done business with in the past. Though the bus had its own small bathroom, Valancourt said seniors were looking for a more comfortable place to stop, but no stop was made. Valancourt said the dude ranch had been warned that its license to operate would be revoked if it allowed the bus to stop. So the bus continued on to Livingston, Montana, a gateway city of the park. I've been there. The bus trip made headlines in Livingston where the local newspaper Livingston Enterprise interviewed the tour group. Gordon Hodgson, Hodgson, Hodgson who accused the park service of Gestapo tactics, tactics. The national park belongs to the people, he told the Enterprise. This isn't right. Cost the Yellowstone communications officer not return as most of the personnel had been furloughed. Many of the foreign visitors were shocked and dismayed by what happened and how they were treated. The National Park's aggressive actions have spawned significant criticism in Western states. It goes on, but that's pretty good. But I, I, I know what the root cause of all this is. Right. Well, right here is how that's happening. This is another study. This is, uh, it's been known that America's school kids were measured, haven't measured well compared with international peers. Now there's a new twist, adults don't either. In math, reading, and problem solving using technology, all skills considered critical for global, global competitiveness. This is from the New York Post, by the way. And economic strength, American adults scored below the international average on a global test, including according to results released today. Adults in Japan, Canada, Australia, Finland, and multiple other countries scored significantly higher than the United States in all three areas on the test. Beyond basic reading and math, respondents were tested on activities such as calculating mileage reimbursements due to a salesman, sorting email, 
and comparing food expiration dates on grocery tags. Not only did Americans score poorly compared to many international competitors, the findings reinforced just how large the gap is between the nation's high and low-skilled workers. Now that right there is the reason that we have what we have is because fools elect tyrants. Right. That's true. And that's why we have a school system like we do, where we just keep pouring money into it and send people out thinking they have an education, and they're still idiots, including me and you. Well, you know, I mentioned before, you know, my very few students in our current school system who have had a basic course in Latin uh -huh. before they reach the eighth grade. I'd love to have had Latin, and I didn't okay. even get it through college. Right now, when I had Latin, we were going to a class in an old house that had been abandoned, uh, and they went in there and made a couple of classrooms in that house, took some petitions out. And the reason they did that was because the schoolhouse had burned. Mm -hmm. So we were going to makeshift classroom. We were having... Uh, class in the uh, uh, the shop, who we having class in the community uh, building, who we having class in, in a close by church, as well as one section of the school that did not burn. But we were getting an education on a very limited budget. Well, I don't imagine that there was $1,500. Or what $1, kind of bathroom did you have? Uh, we had bathrooms in the uh, shop and then the one part of uh, school that didn't burn. Uh, we you had mean a, you had indoor plumbing? Yeah. You guys were uptown. We had two outhouses. We had to walk up oh, on now, the hill. I started out we had outhouses, you know, but uh, this was when I was in the seventh grade and uh, like I say I had a full course in Latin at that time. And, uh, well I wish I could have had Latin but I never did have an opportunity. A very good command of, uh, of the English language. Always, also, when I took French, you know, it gave me a pretty good command of French. Things. Well, we did all that on a limited budget. I remember Mrs. Jones, she's the one that taught uh, the Latin class, uh, was the right portly lady, uh, a widower, uh, who probably made just barely enough to pay her. Uh, expenses yeah. the you know, and well, I'm for paying good teachers and firing bad teachers, and I'm also for quit putting on a show with a fancy building and no education. Right. And school teachers are not allowed to teach anymore. They have to go through all them. You don't, nah, you know what I, you know more about teaching than I do, but I know it's screwed up. Well, you spend too much time on paperwork, uh, reports. Uh, they're given no individual initiatives. I know when a lot of my classes I gave uh, uh, essay questions, mm -hmm. which when you got 30 papers with essay questions on it that you got to go through and get them done in a couple of nights, uh, that's a pretty uh, a hard task, you know. But I did it because I did not think that uh, true, false, and multiple choice. Uh, you know, you can give me a multiple choice test on about anything, I'm going to pass it. What did you teach? I taught uh, social studies, that was my major, but being a small school, I had to teach out of my field some. I taught the U.S. history, American history, U.S. history, world history, civics, and I'd always pick up a course of ninth, tenth, Sometime in 11th grade English course that I had to teach. Did you tell anybody the difference in a republic and a democracy? The difference in what? Did you tell anybody the difference in a republic and a democracy? Uh, I, I, I taught that in my civics class and I brought it in, brought a lot of that in into my uh, history. And it's always permeated what I had to say. I never heard anything about that except when I was in the eighth grade. The teacher told us to, to 
that the United States was not, not a democracy, it was a republic. But he never bothered to explain what that meant. It's a representative republic. Yeah, but uh, there's a big difference in a democracy and a republic. In a democracy, nobody's safe. Right. In a true democracy, they can decide they don't like short right. people it's and kill every one of us. It's mob rule. True democracy yeah. is mob rule. All right, now, by wanting to go to a national uh, ballot for the president yep. and eliminate the uh, uh, electoral college, then you're going to eliminate any influence that the uh, uh, people out in the country, mm -hmm. out in the Midwest, people in well, the Well, you South. eliminate state rights, too. Pardon? You eliminate state rights, too. I mean, it's supposed to be that each state has an equal say in, yeah. in, in the Senate. Right. And they're supposed to have an equal say on the president. I don't care how many people you got living in that state. You're going to have a representative uh, vote according to how many people are there. Right. But but each state is is an entity to itself. Right. And, and what what gets me the stupidest thing that ever happened was the states to give up the right to appoint senators and right. go to a free election. Right. Yeah, because these are senators are the state's representative. Yeah. Whereas the House of Representatives is the people's house, elected by the people. So yeah, I think you ought to uh, go back to appointing senators. I think there ought to be a term limit on them. Uh, well, the reason they got away from that is there was a whole lot of corruption went on. And you had some argument over who actually got appointed. But the corruption was a lot of people bought their Senate seat. Right. But at least they were responsible to the state. We've got two senators in Washington are not representing Tennessee. No, they're not. They're, uh, you got the Amplac Duck and you got old Lamar Alexander. All he, he, I don't even know who he represents. Well, the worst part about it is they, even if they, if you can argue that they represent the people who voted for them, that's not what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to represent the interest of their home state. Right, and not necessarily a, uh, a constituent. Yeah, I don't care if 99% of the people in this state want something done, they're not supposed to give that any consideration at all. They're supposed to look at what's the best interest of the state. Right. Well, you could suppose you had this. Suppose that, that there was a law that said the state of Tennessee had to give everybody a half a million dollars. Well, you're going to get a lot of support for that. Yeah. And if Lamar Alexander and Bob Corker represent the people, they're going to say, yep, we're for that. But the state, the people are paying the bills, the people are supposed to be representing us in our area, they know they can't afford to give everybody a million dollars, half a million dollars. So it would be the obligation of our senators to vote in the best interest of the state, despite what the citizens thought. But well, there's also, if a majority or a large number of people in their voting block uh, were in favor of, uh, let's say, a real issue, uh, uh, mountaintop mining, mm -hmm. okay? Now, should they succumb to those environmentalists, uh, or should they do what's in the best interest? of the state, mm -hmm. which is in the best interest of the mountains, mm -hmm. too, you know, uh, because flat land, the mountains, is of a premium price, mm -hmm. and uh, so just because those people, I bet they never even look at these mountains. I bet I bet you could eliminate Caribou Mountain down here, and a lot of people would go for six months before they ever realize they were well, gone. It makes Tony Fork easier to get to. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the whole point. The, I'm not. I'm not for going in there and tearing the mountains up, and and turning the water down on people and everything else. I'm not for that. I'm for doing it in a, in an orderly and 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 thought out manner, and I'm not for doing it on public land. Right. If you own that property, you ought to be able to do it. Now, if it's public land, if the if the state owns it, then the people have a say in what's done with it. Uh, I think that the state ought to say, you know, we can get a whole lot more money out of this for flat land than we can for a peak. But then you get into the aesthetics and what's prettier and stuff too, so you've got an argument there. But the point is, 
the states have very little representation anymore. And what representation, what authority they have, they've given up for money. They could open parks that's in their state if they'd say they're inside our borders and we're opening them and we're going to pay the bill. But they have allowed the federal government to influence them with uh, all sorts of money coming from us, and that's the reason they've got control over the schools is we're well, depending on I'm their... I'm going to put it in a very blunt form, and I don't mean this ugly in any way, but the states have become a whore to the federal government. Yeah, and so have the counties and the cities. Yeah, exactly. It step starts at the city up through the county and state, mostly state, and the county is subservient to the state, and the state prostitutes itself for the, right. for the federal. Now, now Blount, Kenton, Blount County last week made an offer to provide the security for the parks to get them reopened. Mm -hmm. I don't think that flew very well. I don't think it did either. Well, you know, you had the, the uh, park rangers saying that we are instructed to be the most irritating we can. Oh, uh, yeah. To cause the most inconvenience. Yeah. And that, I think that might, they might be overplaying their hand this time. Because they're still thinking... Well, no, they're not ready, because that's the only way they know to play it. Well, I know, but 20 years ago... They backfire on them, yeah. Yeah, 20 years ago, when when they shut down the government and Newt Gingrich and his crew, I mean, they had terrible coverage by the media. They, they come off as idiots. And there was no counterbalance. There was nobody out there uh, communicating that this is not all the story. Well, right now, you're going to say, people, you've got the, the talk radio and you've got Fox News and all that, but you've got something else, too. You've right. got the Internet. I just read something on the Internet. Right. There, there's the ability now to get out there and research it yourself and find out what's going on. And I'm thinking that they might be just a little bit above, you know, I think they've overstepped, and we'll see. Yeah, but you know what happened after the government shut down when was it, 95? 90-something. 93. Yeah. Early part, I believe it was 93, but it was okay. an early part of 90. You know what happened right after that, don't you? Yeah, they, they rolled back welfare program, and yeah, the public... took control of the... Uh, the Republican, Republicans um, um, made progress at the polls in both Senate and the House. Right, yeah, I know that. And I think they will this time. I think there'll be even more so because there's more way to get the word out now. Right. And uh, and I hope, and I, I hope this don't work out bad, but I hope that they arrest some of them World War II soldiers going to the memorial. I hope they arrest them and put them in jail. Right. And I'll right. help get them out. We'll call B.C. Bonding, but that right. would make it's the best right. thing. What was that number again? Five, five six, three. Double O sixty five. Okay. In case anybody calls you next Saturday morning while you're we'll eating breakfast. We'll have to send B.C. Bonding up to Yellowstone. You know, I, th I thought Obama had uh, uh, issued an uh, order for old yellow not to erupt anymore. You mean old faithful? Old faithful. Old yeller's a dog. Yeah, old yellow ain't no more. <laughs> no, 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 old yeller's gone. Right. Well. Now we ain't advertising for BC Bonding, we're advertising for Dick's Concrete, 562-5656 right. six, six, five, six, if you, you need any concrete. You know, you know, probably if he wanted to shut down uh, old faithful, he might send a truckload of uh, ditch of concrete up there. That'd work. I'm thinking about pouring some on my countertop in my kitchen. How long you reckon you take me to polish it out like they've got that hey, there? I got an article that gives you some uh, some hints on how some tips. How do you it tells you how to do it? Well, I might want to read that. I'd like, I'm, I'm seriously thinking about it. Oh, it makes a beautiful. I saw some of it makes a beautiful counter. Well, it sure don't wear out too quick. Dick's concrete don't ever wear out. <laughs> no, you don't have to worry about Dixie wearing out. You know. And uh, they put a, a particular uh, uh, additional hardener in it, you know, that uh, uh, where it don't, you know, fracture <laughs> or anything, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I might just do that. If you need any Dick's concrete, 562-5656. Hardest concrete known to man. Is that right? And, you know, I have to say, I've been kind of 
working with Digger down there at uh, at, at Wilson's down Gas. There the road. Down there in the middle of the road in Sawmill Holler, five six two five four uh, five four. six two five four four four. I'm doing it again. Four five four four four, and he's got what's he got? Who Digger? Hmm. Well, he's got gas along with his propane. Yeah, what kind of propane's he got? I thought you were gonna ask me what kind of gas. No, I don't care about that. <laughs> He's got 48 different flavors. He told me he had more. More than 48? Yeah. You know, will it burn? Huh? Will it burn? I guarantee it to burn. Will it burn that there torch you had that time? Well, it probably would if I get anybody brave enough to light it. I'll light it for you. I would you? Yeah. I would try to get behind the behind something and stick a... Well, that's what I was going to do. <laughs> that's where I place him... Uh, Propane tanks. Yeah, yeah I, I'll light it if you watch me. <laughs> How do you, what do you flash a propane tank for? Uh, well, a lot of times if you're going to use a torch on them, you want to make sure they ain't no residue. Uh, oh, going to use a torch cutting them. Going to use a torch cutting okay. them, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's always good. Uh, that's good. I always do that. <laughs> Oh, I've learned that the hard way. <laughs> you ever do a gas tank? You ever do a gas I, tank? I had one go through a, a tube eight, a tube six door made out of tube six. Yeah. It took off. It just went right, right through that door. A gas tank? Yeah. Gasoline? Gasoline tank. Yeah. <laughs> Usually they'll mash we, up. We were sorted on it. No. <laughs> you know, it was up there where uh, Zip. Zip what, what did they call that place up there where they had to, right up there across the road, used to be a shell station up there. And I remember there was, uh, Hodge Claiborne lived up there on the hill, and these guys were stripping the paint off of a cabinet up there for Mrs. Right. Hodge. Right. And you remember them old gasoline torches that you used to, you supposed oh, yeah. to burn? burn torch. Yeah, and you, what you done, you put gas in them, and then you, and then pump, you pump, pump them up. I and, got one up there. And then you lit a little bit up here, and it'd right. get hot, and then it'd come out as fumes, and yeah. it'd burn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's use one of them up there uh, burning the paint off right, of the cabinet, yeah. going to repaint it. Right. They was out there in the yard, and they couldn't get it to burn right, and they was out there fooling with it, and it blowed up and shot it all the way off that hill, come over to the filling station up there and hit down there in the driveway. <laughs> uh, Usually we had to go get Amico white gas yeah. to burn in them. You're supposed to burn white gas, but they wasn't... You know, half the time you couldn't find it. Now, Amico's the only one that right, sold it. Right. And half the time you just burn whatever you have. Yeah, gas. I've used gasoline and cigarette lighters, Zippos. <laughs> it's hard to get lit. Right. And when they did, they just smoked up the whole house. <laughs> I never did smoke, but everybody had a cigarette lighter and a knife when I was a kid. Even if you didn't smoke, you didn't know we uh, might need to burn a schoolhouse down. I, I, I never owned a cigarette lighter when I was a kid, but I always carried a knife. And... Uh, a lot of times, I'd be going down uh, the road there, right to the community, carrying a rifle at eight yeah. years old. You know? Yeah, yeah. I used to go squirrel hunting every evening and went home. And I'm gonna tell you something. I was just—I I ain't bragging about something that's long gone, but I was safer, more cautious than most adults. Yeah. Oh, me too, man. I didn't want them to. Yeah, take my rifle away from me. Yeah, I carried my gun pointing down all the time, and right. and I never. We had this conversation earlier. I never shot at anything unless I knew what I was shooting at. Well, I'm, I didn't. My brother-in-law. I don't know, but then, <laughs> and just because of leaves is shaking didn't mean I was supposed to shoot at it. Yeah, my brother-in-law. And, and I never shot a rifle. I wasn't hardly as careful with the shotgun, but I never shot a rifle unless I looked past my car get oh, to yeah, see where he's going. Oh, you know what's behind you with a rifle. And I got a rifle up there. Uh, it's a twenty-two with a shell about that long. Is it a two twenty-two? Yeah, it's two twenty-two. Yeah, I got one of them. And, and now, are you talking about, you, you killed somebody down at... Uh, uh, Jasper Middle School. Yeah, my daddy used to, I bought him that gun, and he used to hunt deer off the porch, and there's a cross right, the field. Yeah. I guarantee you, you can, they're hard-hitting guns. Well, I know it, and I hear, they got, the the bullet's about that long, but yeah. it's a twenty two caliber, yeah. and the shell's about that long, bullet included. Right, yeah. Well, he used to, he used to sit there on the porch, and he could, he could hit an oil can across the field every right. time he wanted to. Right. And he'd sit there and he shot left-handed. He's right. right-handed, but he shot left-handed. And it took me a while to figure out why. But all his life, his left eye was better than his right, right. eye. 
And when he was a kid, he learned to shoot left-handed. Right. And he'd shoot across there. He he's killed many deer across that field. Right. Yeah. I don't know whether they're seeing season or not, but they right. tasted this well, time. Well, it don't make no difference, you know. Uh, back when I wanted to harvest a deer off my farm, uh, I went down and harvested me one by one deer me. Well, I, you know, we never did kill. I mean, he never did kill those when they had little or nothing like that. And we was awful careful about that. But the best time to hunt deer is a week before season opens. Oh, yeah. Because they ain't scared to death then. And uh, we never did waste any. And That's I'll, the reason I won't kill one now. Because I'm going to have to stay with it until I take care of all of it, you know. Well, we didn't, we never did shoot one unless we were pretty sure we were going to get it. And we usually never did take more than one a year, although he did kill two with one shot one time unintentionally. Right. <laughs> he well, tried to shoot him right in the neck, right. and he shot one right in the neck, happened to be lined up with the one back behind, and he broke that in his backbone, he had two to fix. Right. Well, did you shoot that 222? I believe that was with a 30-30. Okay. Yeah, I got a nice uh, Marlin 30-30, too. Leave right. Mm-hmm. That's what he had. It was a Winchester. Okay. Yeah, Winchester makes one too. They made a, made one in the 1890s, a 30-30 saddle rifle. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a friend who has one that his great grandpa carried out on the plains. Well, I ain't done no hunting in a long time. I hate to kill stuff, but I may put some meat in the freezer this year. I've not had to shoot anything in a while because somebody always gives me uh, meat. But uh, meat's getting so expensive, I just might well harvest one. Well, yeah. If, if, uh, if he gets to work, it's really crimping me, you know, to purchase. I, even though I don't eat a whole lot of meat, I am basically a vegetarian I eat a lot of fish you know but uh i mean i'll go out well, deer back. meat's just about yeah. fat free yeah i know that it's it's very 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 low uh, uh i don't know how many grams of fat it's got for a pound but very very few if you grind it up without putting anything in it which i do it's hard to fry without greasing the pan i know that yeah yeah it won't hardly stick together, you know. But I, I don't, I mean, it, you don't have any grease. It, but I, I might, I mean, I, I don't, I'm like you said, I don't eat a lot of meat, but I like a roast. Right. A pot roast. And yeah, I do pretty do good with that. You. And if you know how to fix it, to season it right, it is good. Oh, Elizabeth can, Elizabeth can cook a deer pot roast, make a bulldog break his chain. I tell you what I found that celery yeah. is one of the main components with beef right. or venison. Right. It you don't taste you're not aware of tasting celery, but you also it gets rid of you know, beef has got kind of the tallow in beef right. has got kind of a sharp taste. Right. And deer meat has a distinctive taste. Right. But celery you don't eat celery you just cook it with celery and then throw the celery away oh no, i like to eat the celery too well you can have it if i got any my yeah. goat's been eating what yeah, i had i do i like to eat the celery and uh, uh well we made uh homemade uh soup not for last and we put celery in it i put celery in any kind of beef that i cook yeah and it was, it was a beef beef mm -hmm. vegetable soup you don't need it with pork but you do with beef right. Well, another thing, you know, uh, Napa Auto Parts up there sells parts for your uh, your four-wheeler and your Jeep and your tractor and your lawnmower and everything else. Five six two nine four zero six up there across from the IGA. Uh, or you know, for your forklift or for your bobcat or for your farming all tractor. Mm -hmm. That's them farming all. Farming all. And John and Deer too, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I got John and Deer hemmed up right now. Now here you had a little problem with yeah, John and Deer. Yeah, I had a problem. Yeah, my neighbor, my good neighbor, bless his pointed head. Uh, you know, he called the law on me one time to call the uh, animal control officer. I had a uh, hen that hatched seven 
little chickens. Yeah. And uh, two each woven wire fence around. Mm -hmm. And the hen couldn't get out, but the seven little uh, chickens could. And uh, they went over in my uh, very fine neighbor's yard, and uh, he called the animal control officer because those little bitty uh, baby chickens were over there in his yard. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, well, to make a long story short, my goats, and they got no business getting out. I mean, uh, I really hate that. But they get out, and then they go way around and come down the fence along his property line, mm -hmm. go to the end of the fence, and go back up my driveway so they can meet me when I get there in the afternoon. And, uh, of course, he's called the police, uh, the police, the sheriff's department out there two or three times. Well, every time they get out there, just about, the goats will be back in the fence, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, uh, when I get out there, I didn't know anything about it because they'd be in the fence, you know, they ain't been nowhere. And uh, I'd feed them and water them and uh, uh, then come find out they had been out and made that little excursion. They don't hurt anything, don't we need any flowers, don't tear up any bushes or anything. Uh, in fact, I had one old sorry neighbor up there across this from the store. Uh, when my goats got out, uh, she was so sorry, she called them, put them up and called me. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't need neighbors like that. You no, need you them. need the ones that shoot them or run them off. You need the ones that uh, uh, love animals so much that they shot a widow woman's dog so many times with a pellet gun that the dog died up there in my uh, driveway and I had to take it and bury it which I did uh, you know I'm glad I did you know but uh, uh, that was a good enough neighbor there uh, to shoot the neighbor's dog uh, and the bad thing about it uh, is his wife would put food out there at the edge of the field for the dog to come and eat and then then when he caught him over there, he'd shoot him. So, Sounds like a good man. Yeah, he's a good man, yeah. Feeding them animals, no? Everybody ought to have a, have a man and a neighbor like that. I really do. I'd like to have a couple more like that. <laughs> we'll see if we can't get you some. Uh, we'll see if we can't get you some. Yeah, I'd like to have a couple more neighbors like that. Yeah. Of course, he probably says everybody ought to have a neighbor like me. Yeah. <laughs> that's his go -to. Well, I got one like you, and I understand how he feels. Right. Who's hauling that rock up there? The same people? Up where? Up there, that ass, that concrete. On you up on the lot? Yeah. I didn't know any more had been brought up there. They brought in a whole bunch today. I didn't even know it. I went back there and put the rope back up. I think the same people put that in there before. Right. I ain't got no problem with that. I wish they would put the rope back up so somebody else wouldn't right. decide to Is go it in. down? I put it up. Oh, it was well, down. I, I hadn't even noticed. I, when I come by, I was in such a hurry and so busy, I didn't even notice there'd been any put up there. Now you'd hurry to get down here and be a star, wouldn't you? There was, yeah, I was. But we've got a lot of problems in this country, and it's basically, any way you cut it, it's those who have not wanting to take what those who have, have. That's mm -hmm. the basic thing. And then, and you got groups within that group, you know, and... Uh, each one of them feel like they uh, uh, have a right to make the demands that they're making. And, uh, you know, they, they, they're trying to claim that if we go into, uh, uh, if we don't raise the debt ceiling, that we're going to default on our obligations. Yeah. That's not true. We have plenty of money coming in every month to pay our bills. Let me tell you something. If you took $100 bills and lined them up end to end, you could go around the world, the long way around, around the equator, you could go around the world 120 times with $100 bills on what we take in in taxes for the federal government every year. Yeah. That is enough to pay the interest on our that debt. We take in between two and three trillion dollars mm -hmm. a year. And that's enough to pay the interest on our debt. It's enough to maintain Social Security and do all sorts of other things. But we just can't. They're not. They're not asking 
us to live within our means. They're asking for the ability to get us further in debt. I don't know why somebody don't just say, you know, we're in debt as far as we need to go. You can't do that at home. If yeah. you decide you not have enough money, you yeah. won't just go borrow some more. It's a, it's, they cut the faucet off sooner or later. Right. Well, I think now's the time to make the stand that's being made. I do too. I hope they keep it. Now I don't is the care. Time. And I don't care if the country does default, which it wouldn't. But if, I mean, if, if everybody else quits doing business with us and, and this thing goes to hell, maybe we could start over. Because we need to. All right, well, one of the problems you got if we uh, don't raise the debt ceiling, uh, all those people up there who voted for Barack Obama are going to have to learn how to eat cement. Well, they might have to learn to eat beans and taters, too. No, no, no they will wind up having to eat cement. And if we stop buying uh, that tremendous amount of foreign oil, uh, some of them over there are going to have to start learning how to eat sand. Yeah. Well, here's the thing we could do. We could make use of the property that the U.S. government owns, lease it, use it, uh, sell it, we could run this country for four or five years and not take in anything. Right. Yeah. Very, very true. And, uh, you know, we... The way to defeat the terrorists is to cut their money off. And how do you cut their money off? Well, you eliminate their revenue from, from the oil. Mm -hmm. Now, if we were to... Uh, okay to Keystone Pipeline and let drilling start on public land as well as private yep. land and develop our uh, natural gas, develop our shell oil, mm -hmm. uh, develop our thermal uh, energy that mm -hmm. we have stored in this country. There's plenty of them. There's a band that runs right down to eastern Tennessee on the end of North Carolina. Thermo? Where you can... Uh, you can drill down 1,500 feet and uh, pump the water down and back up and it's mm -hmm. hot, you yeah. know. And well, something else, too. They, there are a lot of people with money involved that don't want this to happen. They don't want uh, energy prices to drop because they're still going to sell the same amount, maybe more, probably more, but they're not going to make as much on it. Right. So I understand that there are going to be some people really get hurt if it, if oil goes from a dollar, from a hundred dollars a gallon down to twenty dollars. I mean barrel from a hundred dollars a barrel down to twenty dollars a barrel. There are going to be a lot of people out there that ain't going to make near as much money. But right. we need to drive the price of energy down in this country we to need get to drive a, it down. But if it does not go down. Uh, a tremendous amount, it's still better to be paying ourselves than to pay somebody yeah. else. Yeah, well, the thing about it is, if we, just, if we could roll it back 20%, you imagine what it'd be like if, if gas was, if gas is a dollar and a half a gallon like it used to be, or right. I can remember a whole lot cheaper than you right. can too, and your electric bill didn't bankrupt you every winter, if you had that, you could do all sorts of things with that excess money. Sure. You could give it to the city, and they could build yeah. more ball parks and, sure. and swimming pools more and spice parks and, and more money walking trails. Park. Yeah, yeah. And we could your county could build another right. money hole park. Right. I think them people in Jellicoe and them people in Stony Fork need a couple of parks too. Yeah, they do. Yeah. That's that's the reason they went under because they didn't have them. That's it. That's the reason Jellicoe went busted is they didn't have a park. Right. It might have had something to do with taking off after that pie in the sky up there, oh, too. Oh, that on Rarity Ridge. Yeah, I knew, Rarity Didn't Mountain. I tell you, when they first did it, when they, they assumed the uh, uh, liability for the uh, utility, yeah. uh, I said right on this program that uh, they're going to have to eat it. They, uh, they've had to put water and stuff up there and nobody there, didn't they? Right, yeah. Well, you know, uh, well we spent $40 million, wasn't it, on an interchange up there? Don't go nowhere? Well, the government spent uh, 
Uh, I think somewhere in the neighborhood of 28 million. 28 million. Okay. 28 million on that rarity. And if really Dennis Potter had got their fat out of the far, they'd still be paying for that road up there, right, too. That's exactly right. And, uh, uh, well, you know, I don't know how much we have spent on walking trails uh, down through here, which I'm all for walking trails. You which know. ought to build your own trail. <laughs> but, you know, that's your find your way, way through the mountains. That's yeah. the way to people did beforehand and spend all that money uh, and ain't nobody walking that trail. Well, that is, uh, I don't think that the county or the city or the state or the federal government ought to be in the entertainment business. I don't either. I don't think, I mean, I'm all for playgrounds and parks and stuff, but I don't think it ought to be done with public money. I think it ought to be done with private money. Yeah. And what I mean, churches used to have a ball game on Sundays. It was so much more fun when the, every church had a ball yeah. game. They not only had a youth ball team, they 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 uh, operated girls softball yeah. teams. They operated uh, adult softball teams. Uh, uh, back when I was a young man, every community had a baseball team. Yeah. And... Uh, I remember the, the uh, ball field over there and I was a little kid. Uh, they would uh, give me a nickel or a dime to go catch the foul balls because they probably didn't have four or five balls to play yeah. with and if one or two of them got away, they were hurting. So. Well, you know, that field there in front of my house, and that was for my time, and I didn't see it, but I've been told that that was a ball field at one time. Right. And uh, it would make a good one. Yeah, it would. But that was a long time ago. Well, then, you know, you ever think about building it, then they may come, then they will come? I thought about it, but they'd want to do it for free. I can't figure out no profit. Yeah. And, you know, Racetrack Holler was a racetrack yeah. at one time. They had, uh, according to what Bill Claiborne told us up there, the pirates, the river pirates, used right. to congregate down there and bet on horse races. Right. I don't know. That was... Right. Before my well, time, I know too. an ideal place. I don't know what you ever watch any of these. Uh, uh, it's like a motocross, but with pickup trucks. They go across yeah. the jump, they go across the, the things, and they don't know all camera turns and this, that, and that. I know an ideal place to build one of those, and for a small amount of money, I can build one of those tracks, and I believe man can make some money off of it. Well, you'd end up with all sorts of regulations on noise and, and oil spills and damages to the property and damages to the wildlife and, and water pollution and dust and, I, and I guess with liability. The, you know, about every business I think about going into, uh, I worry about that, you know. Now I'm cleaning out my building up here and uh, we're going to have to rush and get it back inside tomorrow. If not, the city's going to come down there and be wanting to load it up again. Well, they'll throw it over the hill and I'll have to get it dug right, back out. Right. <laughs> I've got a word for people right. like that, but I'll save it till I need it. <laughs> well, we ought to tell them about vital care, just in case anybody feels a heart attack coming on after watching this wonderful show. You I know? saw vital care coming up the road. This morning, mm -hmm. with a little, uh, their small unit, with a lights just a flash, and they must have got a real uh, uh, urgent mm -hmm. call, because they usually don't have to put their lights well, on. Where were all the fire trucks that are going yesterday? They must have had a 14 alarm fire down through you. No, uh, I saw them there, and there was a minor accident where you come out of. Uh, about KFC, and there wasn't no parts, so no word, just like, like two cars. Well, they had two fire trucks went through just to Wailing. Huh? They had at least two fire trucks went down through well, here. Well, that's normal, yeah. They, when it happens down there, they bring them from up down. Mm -hmm. And when, they, when it happens up down, they bring them from down I here. asked one of the foremen to explain to me why they done that the other day, and he didn't. He didn't know either. I mean, he pretended like he did, but he didn't know. I don't know either. Why do they do that? Well, you know, uh, Gary explained it to me, and I thought I understood it until... Well, Gary's uh, one didn't explain it to me. 
Uh, he, Gary Bird? Uh, Gary Bird? Yeah. I asked him and he never did figure it out. I don't, I don't I mean, he, he pretended like he knew what he was talking about, but I swear I don't think he knows either. I asked him, I said, they had a, they had a car down there and they take it a hollered up to the fire hall and told them about it. And I said, they brought a fire truck from down up here and left that one sitting there next door. And he pretended like he explained it, but I don't think he did. Well, that's the way it was me. I think after he explained it, I still didn't understand it. I don't think he did either. And I'm an understanding soul. I no, I ain't knocking nobody. He's a good feller, awful good feller. But I don't think he understands why they do that either. Well, I always thought the object of the fire department was to get there as quick as possible and squirt water on it. I didn't no, know. No, see, if you turn the side wing on when you leave up yonder, it scares the fire. And Let's it, it know it's coming. Yeah, Let's yeah, it know you're yeah. coming. Okay. Yeah. It don't burn as fast if you blow all right, them horns yeah, and things. Right, exactly right. Well, you know, I had a fire out in my house, and I want to commend the uh, uh, Abernacle Fire Department. They really did a good job, super job. It was so hot, and they went in that attic, it melted the bill off the fire chief's cap. <laughs> well, I've always kind of been over the opinion, if I had a fire at my house, I'd rather they let it burn than to put it out, because they're not going to get there in time to save me much right. damage. I mean, you're just a mile away. Right. But I always figured I'd have more damage to clean up if they didn't let it burn. Right. 562 is vital That's care. That's vital care. Good people, a lot of experience. If you need them in an emergency, call them. Call them direct or call 911 and tell them you want vital care. And uh, if you don't, if it's not an emergency, call them. And they'll come around and transport you where yeah. you want to go. Yeah, they got the latest equipment and the right. super trained people right. and the dedication to service and they're privately owned, so they got to please you or they're out of business. Right. We about got another session in. Anything you want to comment on before we well, quit? No, I just appreciate all the people here. I do, and uh, uh, we were having a beautiful fall. Uh, and is it fall yet? Yeah, fall has failed. I thought it was the 22nd of this month. No, it's the 22nd of September. Okay, right. we're having a beautiful fall, and I believe we're going to get some frost here for very long. I think we will too. We're supposed to have some next week. Are we? Okay. In fact, we're supposed to have some on Thursday, but it ain't in the forecast. I trust right. Katie did more than I do well, weathermen, right. though. I thought we were going to get some this morning. It felt pretty nippy. Yeah, it did. They come up there and Richard had the air conditioner on. <laughs> you reckon he's been dropped on his head too many times? Well, that's head? about the way Elizabeth is. She keeps the air conditioner on and the fans are going. And uh, I'll say, look, you got have to cover me up or something. I'll say, I'm about to freeze. Hop over here, we used to have a fella and we heated that building over there, that office of electricity. And whenever it got too hot, Danny would open the door. Right. You wouldn't turn the heat down. Right. Open the door. Right. Well, people do funny things, you know. <clears throat> if uh, you got the water and you're trying to get it regulated, yeah, and uh, it's too cold, you automatically turn the hot water up. Mm -hmm. You never think about turning the yeah. cold water down. Well, and I always do. I didn't know you could do it any other way. Yeah. <laughs> well, you ever wonder how come? Uh, Cold goes on the right, hot goes on the left. Well, I figured they invented cold first, and if you're right-handed. Exactly right. They put it in, most people are right-handed, put it on the right. And then when people got hot water heaters, they... Except at the county jail. Except at the county jail and about everything I own. At the county jail, hot goes on the left, cold goes on the right, and crap will run uphill at the, at the county jail. It's got pressure, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, folks, thank you. We appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow night on Channel tomorrow 12, night on Channel, Channel 12. And, and here at UG TV starting yeah. at 8 o'clock Eastern, right. Eastern Daylight Time still. Right. We appreciate it. Thank right. you, everybody. TTFN, that means ta-ta for now.